Yeah, we're live. Yeah, we're live. Okay. Good. You know, I don't think I checked my hair earlier. I at least changed my shirt. But I don't know. I put a, a new a little bit. Yeah. I have to adjust. So just waiting here, waiting for some people to join us. Yes, and I'm trying to log in myself because here we are. Oh, Lori's on. That I can see. Well, hello, Lori. Hi, Lori. Good to see you. Nice talking with you earlier today. Steven is on. Lori is on. Kirby I am on. Is on. Got a few people on. Waiting, waiting for things to kick in. Or just <clears throat> waiting for a couple more people before we start Dave is watching. Yes. Um, which means Melissa and Natalie are probably watching. Yeah. Your mom's probably going to be on soon. <laughs> yeah. Dude, to do to waiting a little bit. Just hmm. we're at four, so usually like to five or six. Okay, there's five. Let's do six, just because six. <laughs> oh, there's six. Okay. Well, good. Um, good. More people are coming right. on. You ready? Okay. 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 Five, six, seven, eight. Quarties Cafe. Quarities Cafe. You'll never know that we're gay at the Quarantine's Cafe. At the Quarantine's Cafe. Well, hello and welcome to Shay Kessler Robinson, Von Pussenberg, Habsburg, Windsor, Mountbatten. Oh, almost had it. Missed it up. We'll have to do that. We'll get Shay it. Shay Kessler Robinson, Von Pussenberg, Habsburg, Mountbatten, Windsor. Yes. You're allowed to say it slowly because it's regal <laughs> and it's important. People need to... <laughs> you can't mess up the order. You just no, can't. No. Um, no, it's all good. So I'm trying to figure out. It seems like the camera is a little... I think I have the camera a little higher today. Hi, Stephen Capone. So, uh, let's get some intros out of the way here. So, I'm Matt Knife. Uh, I'm Cubby All. Or Scott. Or Matt. <laughs> If you know us those ways too, but that works. Uh, if you guys like what you see, you can Venmo us at Matt Hyphen Knife. I also uh, just finished this painting today. There's a little bit of a glare at the bottom of it, but um, I tried to tape it to the wall so it doesn't fall on us later. I think I just made it crooked, but it's a bunch of our face peels and it looks like a little cluster of balloons and a happy. Uh, and I kind of put this here because today is sort of a sad day. And, um, but let's do our calming circle and then we'll, we'll do the, we'll do that. So hi, Kim Lee. It's nice to see you. So, uh, we're going to take three deep breaths. So okay. Much better. I actually do feel a lot better now that I've done that. Um, just, just, today's a weird day. I'm, I'm just gonna say, uh, I found out via Facebook that my, an acquaintance of mine passed away from coronavirus, uh, Josh Walwork. He, uh, was in the wardrobe union, uh, 764 here. He's originally from Arizona. Uh, he worked at the Houston Ballet, Cirque du Soleil, he was on Law and Order, Madam Secretary, um, he was born June 3rd, so just a few days after me, so he's a Gemini also. Lived, uh, in our neighborhood, uh, not in our neighborhood, but lived in Brooklyn pretty close by, so I would see him online and I'd poke him here and there, and we met at a party maybe four or five years ago, but we have tons of mutual friends in common, and, uh, we would text, and right at the beginning of the year, he said, like, I was having kind of a mental health, bad mental health day, and just out of the blue, he sent me this text and was like, Matt, you know what, um, I really want to take your picture. I've been wanting to get more involved in my photography, because, I mean, he knows I do costumes too, and I do a whole, like, burlesque and all this other stuff, I've been a little bit more focused on the other stuff and not the costuming. So he's like, you know, you kind of inspired me to want to, like, get out of that box and to start doing some photography again. And I was like, I really want you to model for me. 
And I was really flattered because, you know, I'm an art model and, uh, I mean, I pose all the time, but no one, like, outside of school situations ever asks me. And I'm just like, okay, this is cool. Um, yeah, I'll do it. So, um, you know, and I mean, also whenever I was feeling really bad about my costuming career and cause I kind of took a little bit of a sabbatical from it, uh, he would always just be like, Matt, you know what? I mean, take a break if you need to, it's going to be here when you come back. And I uh, just had some nice words of wisdom and just was kind of just is like a teddy bear of a man. And he, uh, modeled for me once came over here and, uh, actually Steven, you own you own Josh's butt. <laughs> so it is there. And I actually am really proud of that painting. Like the lighting and the painting is really, really good. So, um, so yeah, it's a little weird. He was 45. Uh, I don't know any details, like if he was here or if he is in Arizona, but, um, it's just kind of sad to know that somebody that, that we had, um, contact with and was kind of a supporter, uh, is not with us anymore. And part of me, I almost canceled doing this today because I was like, oh, is this I just don't feel right about it. But then the other part of me was like, I know that you all like really appreciate this and it's kind of helping lift you up. But, and then also the death positive person in me is like, you know, whenever death happens, people are like, no, don't talk about it. Like, you know, death is scary and it's awful and yeah, it's scary, but you know, it's a little less scary when we talk about it. So, um you know, not to sound too morbid, but, you know, I mean, I, the death positive part of me is, you know, get your affairs in order, you know, we're not in an apocalypse situation, we're not, but having a death plan is always a good idea, and uh, so then your family doesn't have to deal with all that stress on top of the stress of grieving, um, and you know, I mean, we wish him well. So I may have a lot to say about death positivity, but I also have to admit today it's a little jarred because I'm not sure how to talk about this or to, uh, with, you know, but again, I'm still feeling positive. I, you know, it just, I'm wishing him well and we're dedicating this episode to him. So, uh, if you are a, a a friend of Josh and you're watching because I think Patrick was a friend too. Mm -hmm. It's like my condolences for your loss as well. And, uh, you know, we're all here for each other. We can talk about it and celebrate Josh, um, because he was a great guy here. So, um, how are you all doing? Like, um, you feeling good? Like, seems like Facebook people are a little stir crazy. I know people are super sexually frustrated. I've been seeing a lot of that. Um, and I think everybody's kind of hitting the point of, uh, just cabin fever, isolation, mm -hmm. crazy, but, you know, just gotta stay focused. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually did a little self-care today, like right before I got the bad news, uh, my friend Cliff and, uh, Edm uh Calgary, uh, he is a physical, uh, um, trainer physical no, phys physical trainer but what do you call it like a personal trainer sorry yes. personal trainer and uh we met at the edmonton burlesque festival in alberta a few years before and he's just a really handsome man and i mean he played football i mean he's like six two and just like this like giant arms and i mean just, and he's a stripper and so you're just automatically like hi i mean just i mean he's a really sweet guy so he and I have been keeping in touch, and uh, I have been. He actually uh, asked me to work out with him when we were in Edmonton, and I've never done that with someone. So I was like, you know what? Yes, we're paying for this hotel, and it has a free gym, and you are a personal trainer, and you will help me. So it was really encouraging and nice, and uh, it was like it was lifting with a little yoga. So um, he's lost a lot of business, and um, I. Cubby and I have been meaning to go to a gym, uh, for a while and we were really about to do it. And then all this craziness it hit. And so you can't go to a gym. So it's been interesting to see a lot of people are like, Oh, this is how you can work out at home. Mm -hmm. So I figured to throw him a couple dollars and hire him to teach us. Like I, I took a, a bunch of pictures of our space and the equipment, the little equipment we had. And I mean, it was a pretty intense workout for, um, uh, like, I didn't know I could do this with the couch. Like, 
Oh, I can't spread my legs out, but I could sit and do this. <laughs> I didn't realize I could do that. And now I do. Yeah. So that was a little bit of self-care and fun. And, yeah. you know, it was also, we were doing it live streaming. And as I said, he's real easy on the eyes. So it was just really nice to like, it was like, a, now let's do Downward Dog. And then Scott and I would go. But of course he knew. Like yeah. I mean, he yeah. knew too because I mean he was teasing us too. Or like, what was it—the happy baby pose? We yeah. were doing a lot of laughing about. Yeah. Because I mean, you do look like a little happy baby, but you also look like a power just, bottle. Well, just too. like rolling around on your back and holding your ankles practically behind your head. Just, just imagine that look. You know, it's just kind of funny. Yeah. Hi, cheeky cheetah. It's nice to see you here. Hi, cheeky. And Patrick, how are you? Patrick's nice. The Patrick's Hamilton is here all. Um, so yeah, so that was that was really fun. And I mean, I feel like you know he he gave us like a goal. He was like, I think if you do this for six weeks, like three times a week. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I think you're gonna see some results and uh, mm -hmm. you'll feel healthier. And I mean, honestly, I had a little bit more energy today because when I don't have energy, my impulse is to not work or not to work out. But they're like, that's why you're tired. And it's so counterintuitive. Um, downward dog, upward anus. <laughs> Stephen Capone, of course. Of course, the lady Capone has something to yep. say about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, did you enjoy oh, it? No, I had a great time. Um, I was I was exhausted. I didn't realize how weak I was in the shoulders and the arms. Um, and it's funny because it's like, I've always felt that I, like, literally pulled a lot of weight at work. You know, it's like I could lift things and carry them and and everything but then again that all i guess that came down to core I and make legs carry stuff. which i didn't have a problem with it's just like my arms like wow i couldn't do a push-up like that that diamond slot push-up those were like, hard those were those so. were really really hard those were so. like i was just like that that's an insanely hard push-up like yeah. i was like all right like i so i'm giving you have to give yourself a pass okay, but he kept saying it was like the more we do it the 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 easier it'll get, yeah. and I believe that. I did a couple more than Scott, though. But then he kicked my ass and some stuff, too. But then, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of how, how cute Smitten was, who was uh, training us, it was really nice to look over at Cubby, too, and he has this weight and his big biceps and his big shoulders, and I'm just like, ooh, he's gonna get all beefy and hot. And so it'll be cool. So Scott's gonna be my um, my workout buddy. Yeah, the Lady Shapiro saying they are hard. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, even on the knees, like, even even in doing it the sissy, you know, Matt Knife way, it was still difficult. Hey, it's not a sissy thing. It's like, I was doing it too, a lot of people do it. So, I mean, we're starting out, so, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like yeah, But it was good. But I'm looking forward to it, you know, especially because it's like, it's not every day. It's not two times a day. It's like... You know, it's okay to start out small. I mean, we have friends that like they've been doing this for a while, and they're constantly talking about their diet endlessly. No, just kidding. And and what they do, and I'm like, I'm I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. And here it is, it's like, just start, just do something, mm -hmm. something. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so it would it would be it would be nice to have a little bit more like, you know, definition and. I really want my butt to get nice. Like, that's the thing that's really making me happy is that, like, it's like, because I just love my butt and I can't see it. So anything I can do for my butt that makes it happy, <laughs> like, I'm going to do it. So, well, I think um, it's a nice butt, as so. if, as you all should do the things for your butt to make it happy. So, um... Again, you guys can ask, uh, you can ask us some questions, uh, you can check, let us know how you're doing, but, um, I have, oh, well, I guess we could talk about this because, I mean, it's already a really weird, weird, <laughs> weird episode. So, this weekend, Cubby and I had an experience that was sort of new <laughs> to us. Uh, I was working a gig right before all this craziness happened about a month and a half ago. And it was a weed party because I mean, weed is practically legal here. And, um, so there were a bunch of booths set up and you know, they had the big Mason jars of weed. And, uh, th and we did a show and there was a lot of smoking and a lot of fun, a lot of socializing, kind of like in the vein of Burning Man. But there was a gentleman selling LSD. And I was like, you know what? 
I've been curious about those stem mushrooms a few times. The price was decent. They look legit. I asked all the right questions. And, um... Oh, mom thinks we're perfect. And well, mom, you know, we're going to see how you feel after this story. <laughs> so, well, you know what? Mom knows that, you know, this has a deeper spiritual meaning. And we've had talks about, about, uh, ethogens as they call them. But, um, so we had some and I knew that, you know, we're quarantined. So why not? Like, why don't we, you know, we had nothing else to do. So, uh, so we decided that, uh, what was it? Sun Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday was the day to, to try it out. So, um, it was a lot less nauseous than mushrooms, which I was really like, uh, surprised well happy about. Um, but it was a lot, it was very visual. Like at one point I was looking up at our popcorn ceiling and it looked like it was a bunch of like frogs were swimming in it and I could see their little eyeballs looking down at me. And I was like, okay, that's a little disturbing and creepy, but cool at the same time. And, uh, lots of like pyramid prison things around stuff. So, uh, I mean, it goes on for hours so at one point I was like, we need to watch something like very soothing, very calming. So we put on some Bob Ross because it's on the internet and it's actually been very educational for me to watch it because I just, as a painter, I'm like, Oh wow. I just like, I've never thought to do that. So it was crazy because Bob Ross like paints on this giant black ba background. So like he had all these like crazy rainbows all over him. And then the background did and like Cubby and I were just, watching this thing just completely transfixed like just like this is Bob Ross like you must have known that people were gonna do this with your videos because I mean there were so many times I had to ask him I was like am I hallucinating that that looks like a snowflake or does it really look like a snowflake and he was like I think it's column A column B and so it was really cool so the relevancy of all that is um I would give it an A plus, but I would also, I can't imagine being in a party situation with a bunch of people around me. That would be way too much. And, um, but it was fun to do, you know, just here. We went outside for a split second. It was so funny. I was making fun of Cubby because like he was holding on to the door and I was like, you know that if you let the door go, it's not going to go away. Right. <laughs> So it was really fun, but it also gave me a brilliant idea because, you know, we were live painting here and all that. So, um, I, I'm actually going to do a Bob Ross painting for you right now. And, and it was the one that we were watching. So, you know, as this is going, Cubby's going to be, uh, running the comments and talking and, and letting me know what's going on. You guys can ask questions. Um, if you guys want to talk about a silly LSD trip experience you had or some kind of crazy weird visual, um, just let's comment and, uh, we'll see what happens. So we're going to flip this around. And give me a second to, I mean, everything's mostly set up, but just let me. Because I want you to be able to see me. And see, this is the cool thing about watching Bob Ross was that I was like, okay, now I can, um, you know, I can kind of steal some of his uh, camera shots and things like that. He, uh, at one, one episode, he had his palette knife out and he was like, you all right me and asked me why my equipment looks so different. And he was like, it's cause we have to spray all the metal flat black so it doesn't shine in the camera. And I was like, Hmm, that's professional. That's extremely professional. So if that's what you're looking for, that's not what you're getting right now, but it's just this real easy peasy. And it was also funny to me because the first step is with, um, uh, a paper towel. And I was like, Oh, I could do it with toilet paper. And then all the people would gag and it would be really funny because toilet paper is so, uh, scarce. You know what? I need to grab one thing.
You gonna say anything to entertain the people while I'm gone? <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't have anything to say. I was just reading back um, over the comments and just seeing who was coming in. I guess I just got a little sidetracked. Um, actually, people are talking to each other. Brandy and Lori are talking to each other. Okay, so um, I'm back. So, um, so the first step of this is that we're basically using three shades of gesso. And gesso is basically, it's like a primer paint for, uh, for panels. It's ground up marble, which I think is really cool. The geology nerd in me is like, oh, marble. So, um, you could do some like really cool sculptural stuff with it. Um, but there's white gesso, gray gesso, and black gesso. So what you're going to do is I put them in these little things here and I'll just fish it out accordingly, but I'm just going to knock out a little bit on this plastic lid because you know that's the cool thing about acrylic is that if you paint it on plastic you can peel it off which is where I got my idea for my face peels so you just take a paper towel and I have my notes right here so I can remind myself what what the painting looked like and you just kind of dab it dab it around and you think about where the like lightest part of this is going to be. So it's going to be like right in the center. So you just sort of dab it, just kind of dab it. <laughs> and you just say very soothing things as you dab, dab, dab away. Can you all see all right? Yes, they can see pretty well. Okay. Can you yes, we can see the whole canvas and um, yeah. Yeah. So you pretty chocolate. much, you know, and look, you just get these like really cool, it just breaks that black up really nicely. Mr. Capone is loving this. And... Adam is saying you need an Afro wig. Yes, Adam. We were just thinking we had one. And we got rid of it. I think we donated it to somebody. We got so. rid of it because of cultural appropriation, because white people aren't supposed to have afros now. So I was like, that's a whole lot of mess I don't need right now. And, and so there was actually a young drag queen of color who um, I gave a whole lot of wigs to, because I had some, like, I had a, like, teal afro wig and, like, a pink one. And I was just like, you know what? I don't like wigs to start with, and I just really don't need this. So I, I do want to dress like Bob Ross. Like, I really, really do. And maybe when all this is over, we could really, really do it. But, like, I also, you know, gotta be happy trees. Happy trees. So you just keep, keep doing it. And as he said, you know, you just, like, it's free form. You can make this is your imagination, you know. Sorry, let's get this. Adam was saying there are plenty of Jews with rows. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's like a whole thing into itself is the Jew fro. I don't know. You know, I'm in a community of people that, that take stuff very seriously, as we should. But I also, you know, gotta, gotta be mindful as they say. So this is kind of nicely mapped out at this point. I just want to... Dab, 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 dab. Dab, 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 dab. See, this is what you do with your toilet paper. Oh. <laughs> yes, because Noah needs toilet paper. Now I can charge $20,000 for this. Or a, what was that? $120,000 for the banana. Oh God, the banana. Don't get me started on that banana shit, guys. Steven's wanting to know if, it, if it's a vagina. It could be. Yeah. I was thinking that too. Is like, it looks like you're painting a vagina. What is that? See, I'm not the only perverted person. My sisters are watching here, and they, you know, they used to tell me I was perverted all the time, and it was just like, I was just ahead of my time, you know? Because, look, I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of people that are more perverted than me. <laughs> but I love it. So, you know what? You just sort of, it's just a little, 
little forest here. And just look at how much dimensions in that already. Like. Brandy is saying, well, you're using toilet paper to paint that. She's asking people to TP her house and throw it at her front door. <laughs> yeah, I saw that update. Yes. I was like, Brandy, you're funny. <laughs> she got chemo brain. Is that what she called it? The yes, other day? yes. Chemo brain. I didn't know that was a thing. So... Now what we're going to do, now that we have our nice little, like, kind of ethereal background here, um, we are going to, so this is the black, and, which is really kind of more of like a dark, dark gray, but, you know, it'll stand in. And then we got a neutral gray here. So with a sponge brush, which he had a much bigger one, but this is the one I have. You know, you just get it a little wet. And you dip it in the black and you get it nice and saturated like share. And then you're going to press and release. <laughs> Bend and snap. You know what, I, I am going to open, I am going to put some more white up here, because this is just disappearing. White isn't broken up enough. Which probably means this one needs. He also recommended wait, letting it dry after this, and I was like, alright, yeah, I could see that. And then you could probably also, like, put a varnish of, like, clear coat over it to give it, like, you could just keep doing that. But then I was also like, girl, I just watched you paint this whole thing in one sitting, and you could just do that too. So, <laughs> that's kind of the direction I need to go in, because sometimes when I get into those, like, Oh, layer it and layer it and layer it. And then it's like, you know, 20 years later, you're still working on the same piece. And I'm just like, it's just too much. So you just, you know, kind of throw some trees in here. And it can be any kind of tree you want. That one's a little thick. And you know what? I'm going to use this brush because I like it better. I'm using this guy. Because I'm more confident I can control that. So. And then, you know, as he said, not all trees are straight. There are some homosexual trees <laughs> out there. So we will put one of those in the back here, being sassy. Just going to give him a little S curve. Because he's like, what? <laughs> Okay, and then we want to do some of these in the gray because then it'll look like, you know, you have a, you have depth. Then you want to take your white and then you want to just do a couple here. Coleman is saying he could just listen to you talk about your brush preferences as though they're people with their own unique personalities. <laughs> I'm not going to use this brush because he's just being a jerk lately. He's just not very fun. Okay. So then what it's you almost can like Gale do from Bob's Burgers. is you can take a smaller brush and then with the black you can go in and do a nice little fine tree. And then he has some branches. 
he's reaching over to the little gay tree and is like, hey, buddy, you want to party? And the cool thing uh, that I did learn from Bob Ross is that, like, you're not going to paint every single leaf, but if you do, like, fine details on stuff, like, um, in the front, then it kind of fills it, the rest of it in in an interesting way. And I was like, you know, my mind was kind of blown. I was like... another guy here. This tree has bad attitude, so he's going to point at that tree, and then his other arm is going to come up like he's exacerbated. <laughs> Your painting is making Adam think of Frozen for some reason. You know, I still haven't watched Frozen. There's like little girls everywhere that are like clutching their pearls because I just said that. <laughs> and then, you know, you do the same with your little, with your gray trees, like your medium gray trees. You just come over here and you punch out some and this is where Bob Ross even admitted, he was like, this is where your painting will be better than mine because you might have a better imagination than me. And I'm like, you know what, Bob Ross? I think I do. <laughs> like, because <laughs> a lot of his paintings, like, I mean, they're gorgeously rendered and they're beautiful and I'm learning a ton from the man. But like, it was funny. I was showing it to you, Carlos, and you were like, you were like, let me guess, this man, all of his paintings look the same. And I was like, so, Bob Ross, I take my hat off to you, but you know, as yeah. you can see, I'm going to add some special, special mat knife kicks to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that just, you know, you can go as crazy with this as you want. I'm going to hit up a couple of, see, I get so bad because at a certain point I'm like, all of it starts to feel like it looks the same to me. So that, like, you know, if you have your reference photos of trees. I had a really cool tree where I grew up. Uh, my mom's watching my sisters, too. And we had this cool Osage orange tree in front of our house. It was gigantic. It was probably, like, 150 years old or something. But it was covered in thorns so you couldn't and poison ivy, so you couldn't climb it. But it was really pretty to look at. And then you go in with your white and you do the same. For this, I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. I really enjoyed this brush because it's more of a detail brush. Actually, this one's a little sexier. This one. And this one gives you, yeah, there we go. So y'all get the, the gist of this because I actually like want to go through this and give it some time it deserves so I can go back and do this detail. But then what you want to do is we need like you know Bob Ross is really big on like the state like this the focal point so there's like a giant mountain or whatever so he we have to do the like giant Bob Ross tree because we have all the background trees and now we want like V tree so what you do is you go in with your darkest color and you just there he is and you bring him down here and then he's gonna fork out that way and he's gonna fork out that way and then he's gonna be like hey girl sorry to the gay tree he's like upstaging her just a little bit so 
So what's everybody thinking about? Are people feeling good about their life choices up to this point? Well, up to this point, they're just enjoying the trees and the painting. Okay. So now, since we have our Bob Ross tree in the for and the more in the middle ground here, we're going to focus on sort of bringing this forth. So the first thing is Bob Ross is real big on his like pathways because you want to make your viewer feel like they can just walk into the painting. So uh, we're going to sh oh, just a touch because then you can see. Her. So we're just going to do a little. Woo, look at that we got a path oh my god it's so mystical and pretty so now what we're going to do is just really define this foreground middle ground place so you i actually i'm going to go back to the sponge brush because it's a little smaller but it is also soaking wet at this point and we're gonna dip it in the white and then a little bit of the medium. And then you're just gonna just create different levels. And it'll just go back and forth. Okay, Bob Ross, I'm really not feeling this brush. <laughs> you know what? Every And I almost could promise you I know what he would say. He'd probably be like, yeah, like, if it's not working for you, do something else. Okay, Bob. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. There we go. And you just kind of tap a 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 So that's always the thing with Bob Ross paintings I find too, is like a lot of times it's like he's making marks on a painting and you're just wondering what the hell are these marks that he's making on this whole area? And, and suddenly you just watch it evolve and, and over time and the next thing you know, it's like, oh my God, it's, it's totally this thing. And I didn't even realize what it was. And that's what I always found interesting too, because it wasn't like draw it in and then paint it. It was more of like, no, what? what does the brush do to create life? It's like when he make, uses a span brush, brush to do all the, the evergreen tree boughs and stuff. It was like, oh, I got that fan brush. That's amazing. It's awesome. Okay. And then, you know, you can go back to your, you know, smaller brushes and just sort of fill in some of the detail too. Mm -hmm. Just sort of give. So that was Deep Thoughts by Cubby Hall, apparently. Stephen thinks so. <laughs> I think so too. So we are going to have one branch come out like this on this guy and then let's see let's let's brush some of this together Yeah. 
There we go. Yeah, a cubby really said it well because it's sort of like at some point you're kind of like, all right, is this starting to go off the rails? Because at one point I was just like, what? What is happening here? <laughs> but then you could bring it back. I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about um, paint is that, or, you know, in the case you let it dry and then you come back to it. But I got, I don't know, I think part of the beauty of this is just to sort of let it... Um, you know, is to kind of try to capture it all as soon as you can. So let's come back to this road. Sort of fine. Your mom says it reminds her of the Frost poem, The Road Not Taken. Yes, it does. I could see that. But Brandy wants to see a, a lonely, bright pink flower. That would be cool. Um, I don't know. I was thinking about a little axe murder. Just like, and just right down here, we're just going to put a little axe murder. I think you could have a little axe murder. It's just a little axe murder, you Maybe know? Maybe a body floating in the stream. Yeah, too. like just, just a body left on in the middle of the path, you know? You know, I mean... So I got, like, a head, and then, you know, you got arms raised really high, and then a little axe, and then, Let's make it a clown, because nobody really cares if a clown gets murdered, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think we have clown friends that will resent that. No, I think you're right. So the clown... is... is here. And... has accepted his fate. <laughs> And then this person has spent two weeks in isolation <laughs> and had finally had enough. <laughs> that was my Frito pie, huh. is what this clown was saying. So now the clown can have puffy hair because it's a clown. Patrick Hamilton says, hashtag clown friends. <laughs> you know what? I think at the end of the day, we'll make it like a, like a, like a fab fiberglass clown. Like, so it's not a real clown, but then, you know, you're left with the, why did this guy take this fiberglass clown sculpture into the middle of the woods? Just so, to chop it up. This is how we're going to make this mine, is that, you know, you have this nice, pretty forest, and then suddenly, clown murder. That's kind of what your mom said, too. It's like, only you would put an axe murder in this lovely, calm scene. <laughs> <laughs> that is what we call juxtap... Well, oh, God, I always say this wrong. Juxtap... Opposed, juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. It is like the most overused art school word ever. Like, it is just... I remember I had a director once who... I, I wrote it down. He said it, like, in, I think, four paragraphs, like, 20 times. And I made a diagram of all the different things that were, like, um, juxtaposition. See, I can't even say it now. It's such a, like, disgusting word to me. But... I was like, this concept doesn't even make any sense now. <laughs> like, <laughs> so there you go. I mean, I'll touch this up later and maybe next day we'll add some color to it. But um, I'm going to let it dry and sort of get, um, so I can go back and hit these highlights and shadows a little bit more. We can tell that. 
the axe murder story a little bit more. We'll make it a white face clown. Yeah, because that, that explains why he's so rigid. <laughs> and then I think trailing behind should be like pieces of candy. Almost like a pinata had exploded. <laughs> and what this tree is going to be really interested. Like, he's going to be like, hmm. Like, I have to look whoa. at myself, like, to get, to get the expression right. So I think, like, a... We'll work on that a little later. But the trees are definitely going to be involved in this scene because they are what they're, what is called in the legal world, accessories. So <laughs> I think we're going to let this chill out and we'll roll around here. Yeah, because we've got about 15 minutes now. So we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. So did you guys enjoy that? Was that fun for you? Was that um, calming? And I think they were enjoying it. Um, yes, laughing at the clown, laughing at the candy. Oh, Shannon, I think you're quoting yeah. the, the James Woods. It's like, ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> Extra that. I don't know. I just think it's fine. That's like, when I look at Bob Ross's paintings, that's like the thing that's missing is like, where's the person? Like, is there a person here? Like, I mean, again, like you've set this up for a really awesome story. It just is missing like one thing. And it's like the, the subject, I guess. I mean, I get that like nature is pretty as a subject and all that, but then just the storyteller in me is like, I mean, of course we were we were tripping, so we were laughing a lot, and I was just like, we were watching a couple of them, and I was just like, he was doing one of a campfire, which I actually think is going to be the next one, and I had a lot to say about that, too, which was funny, so my campfire scene, I think, will be pretty, pretty funny. Um, the Lady Capone says that you're wearing Steven's, or Car uh, Carlito's shirt. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I had on, um, Steven, if you look at that, uh, the tie skirt outfit i was like the top the those shirts are all carlos's <laughs> like um i mean i was like the second he gave them to me that's why i took them was because i was like oh my god i've been wanting to remake this outfit and so well this one was more of a loan that i never take back so um sorry when we see you i'll give it to you but sorry um although i i think it's been loaned like three years now so Oh, did you borrow that and you never gave it back to them? Kept forgetting to because oh, it ended see, up in the drawer and everything. So, and now and he's caught. There is photographic evidence of Scott is a bad um, borrower. So I think I think the lesson in this Carlos is don't lend Cubby anything. <laughs> Generally, I am a good borrower. You're though. not fat now, Carlos. Please, please. I don't want to hear it. No. Um, so guys, is there anything else? Uh, <laughs> I'll go. Just wondered where it went. Yeah. Well, Cubby had it. <laughs> he was holding it hostage. I don't know. It could look cute on you too, Carlos. It'd be nice. We could have a competition. Like we could, we could mail it to you. And then when it gets there, Carlos puts it on, takes a picture, and then we can do a poll online. And whoever, whoever wore it best gets to keep it. <laughs> Um, oh, that is right. Yeah, the underwear. I remember that banana hammock. <laughs> Didn't those finally just bite the dust? The, um, the rainbow underwear? Not those. The ones that I have now. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they got pretty... 
It's just stretch out. That's what they do. It's underwear. It's old. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's always really funny whenever Scott has like blown out underwear ever because like at the most random time I'll be like watching TV or I'll be working on something. And he'll just come up and he goes, "Matt, I just have one thing to say about that." And he'll turn around and just like split his pants or his or his underwear, and it just always catches me off guard every time, and it makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> Um, I highly recommend that prank to to a partner. Uh, we were well, we were in Montreal. That was like we were at the Wiggle Room, and it was my birthday. It was a burlesque show, and they brought me up on stage. And I mean, I was wearing cute underwear, but it was underwear that like was on its last leg, and I guess there was just like a big hole in it. And like Cubby like pulls me aside and he goes, "You have a big hole in your underwear," and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna make it work." And so when it was my turn to do whatever it was, I just like split my underwear. <laughs> I was like, "I was like, we're in Canada. I'm just gonna make this work." So um, let's see, anything else? So yeah, I guess that's it for today. Um, we're gonna do the Night of the Demons review tomorrow. Um, we might revisit this live painting. We'll just see how it goes. I might finish it tonight. We'll see. And uh, we'll end this like we end Homo Erectus, uh, which is nice as the new fears. Freedom is no fear and love is limitless and we love you. So we'll see you soon. We'll see Have you tomorrow night, at 8, everyone. actually. Yes.